Luck is best described as good fortune, the balance of momentum shifting positively for a person which leads to success for that person without him doing anything to warrant it. Basically, everything goes your way by chance. Now, if someone told you that you could take luck, turn it into a substance that can be consumed, which will in turn enforce manufactured good fortune upon a person for a limited amount of time, then I think many of us would say, you sir, are absolutely stonewall crazy. However, and this is a big however, while it may not exist in our everyday muggle world, you can bet that it exists in the wonderful world of Harry Potter and what an incredibly imaginative potion it was for JK Rowling to add to the wizarding world. In fact, out of everything, every spell, potion, charm, curse, everything ever created, the ability to create luck for consumption is a feat at the top of the mountain and in my opinion, nothing comes close to it and that is what we're going to talk about today. Liquid luck guys, the history, how it was created, who used it, what happens if it's overly consumed, just how effective can it be? I'm going to answer all of those questions in today's video. So with that being said, if you want to know everything there is to know about Felix Felicis, then stick around. Today's video is definitely the one for you. Okay everyone, let's get started. So Liquid Luck, also known as Felix Felicis, is basically bottled good fortune. I still struggle to comprehend how this creation was even brought to light, let alone perfected. As I said in the video's introduction, to be able to bottle luck and use it to one's advantage is simply incredible. So let's talk about the history of the potion. The potion was invented in the 16th century by an extremely talented potioner named Zygmunt Budge. The potion's invention truly does say a lot about Zygmunt as he left Hogwarts at the age of 14, never completing his education, yet still going on to create one of, if not, the most groundbreaking potion ever made. Zygmunt was rather peculiar when it came to potions, it was more of an obsession for him. After learning that he could not compete in the Wizarding School Potion Championships due to him no longer being a student, Zygmunt moved to the remote island of Hermitrae off the coast of Scotland. It was there that Zygmunt devoted himself for decades to potion making and through such efforts created Felix Felicis or Liquid Luck, Bottled Good Fortune. He considers the potion the greatest achievement of his career and I really love how it's not just the creator's name attached to the potion. It was quite enjoyable to learn about Zygmunt's backstory and it shows that JK can, when she wants to, give us more depth in certain areas and that's really nice to see. Anyway, continuing on, we'll now look at the potion's ingredients and how to brew it. So, the first thing to do is to take Ashwinder egg and add that to your cauldron. That is the first ingredient. Then you add horseradish and heat the cauldron. After that, juice a squill bulb and add that to the current ingredients and then stir the ingredients vigorously. Chop up the tentacle-like growth on the back of a murtlap, add that to the mixture and continue to heat the cauldron. For those of you who don't know, murtlaps are basically near identical to rats except for the growth on their back and tail. I can assume that it does not harm the murtlap to remove such a growth and if it results in the animal's death, then it could be legal to do so due to reasons like overpopulation. However, I honestly can't say because there's no information available on the breeding status of murtlaps. Okay, so next, one must add a dash of tincture of thyme and then stir slowly. Next, we'll grind up an Okami eggshell and add that to the mixture. We'll then stir slowly and heat the cauldron once more. Next, we'll add a sprinkle of powdered common roux and stir vigorously. Then we'll heat the cauldron one last time. You'll wave your wand over the potion in a figure of eight and say the incantation, Felix Sempra. The potion must stew for six months before being ready for consumption. 
and due to the difficult nature of consistently cooling and reheating the cauldron, along with the requirement of vigorous, then slow, then vigorous stirring once more, it's very easy to get the potion wrong, which can have disastrous effects on the drinker. It was these reasons alone that put Harry Potter off attempting to make more of it after consuming his foil. The potion is described to greatly resemble molten gold, with droplets leaping out at intervals like goldfish soaring from their bowl. It is noted that the drops of potion that leap across the surface never spill, and that the potion splashes about merrily when in a cauldron. Okay, so let's take a look at the effects of the potion and how it exactly works. Liquid Look causes the drinker to have a limited period of good fortune, during which they are likely to succeed in all endeavours in which success is possible. They have a strong perception of this effect, including a high level of confidence and a sensation of infinite opportunity. This is accomplished not through direct application of force or granting the drinker any extraordinary powers but by inspiring the drinker with a favourable pathway through the circumstances. When Harry took the potion for example, he had the sensation that Felix knew what it was doing and that he needed only to follow its inspiration, however unlikely the approach seemed as a means of accomplishing his goal. It indeed led him into a near freakish but plausible set of circumstances in which all the right choices seemed obvious to him. Along the way, without even meaning to, he also accomplished some minor side goals, such as breaking up Ron's bad relationship and destabilising Ginny's relationship with Dean to give Harry himself more of a chance. A person under the potion's inspiration, or under the potion's influence, would likely prove highly adaptable to any unexpected change in circumstances. There are always infinite possibilities in any situation, some of which doubtlessly lead to the desired outcome, and Felix can highlight them no matter what happens. Though Felix Felicis confers no extra powers on the user, it seems capable of drawing out the best reserves of their ability if needed. Harry was able to use refilling charms non-verbally for example, even though he had not yet managed it in his previous classroom practice. Now, with all the ups, there are downs, and there is a period of coming down when Felix Felicis wears off. During this time, the user's sense of confidence fades, and in addition to that, unlucky circumstances can quickly catch up to them if they are not vigilant. It is unclear whether the potion wearing off actually increases the user's bad luck in a small overbalancing period. Basically, if one keeps drawing from the good fortune bowl, the bad fortune bowl will remain full and ready to spill. The potion can be quite potent if used incorrectly, and what I mean by that is overdosing. Overdosing is extremely dangerous as Felix Felicis is very toxic in large quantity, and over reliance on it may lead to dangerous overconfidence and even recklessness. Due to its effects, it is considered a tool of cheating and therefore is prohibited in organised events such as Quidditch and examinations, which its inventor Zygmunt rightly agreed with. We know Harry's success with the potion and we also know how he gave the remainder of his vial to be shared between Ron, Hermione and Ginny in order to have good fortune against the vastly experienced and more powerful Death Eaters during the Battle of the Astronomy Tower which they did, successfully avoiding harmful courses and escaping with their lives. Horace Slughorn claims to have twice taken the potion in his life, once at the age of 24 and once at 57, resulting in two perfect days. But I recently came across a brilliant video by YouTuber Brian Seeker, who makes excellent Harry Potter videos by the way, and in the video he highlighted an easter egg or a background moment that I have to admit I completely missed and only first discovered now in November 2019 after all these years. You can see Horace Slughorn about to go to battle and what is he drinking? What did he just take a swig of? He's got a file of liquid look. 
It's absolutely incredible for the movie to have such a minute occurrence happening in the background, which Brian rightly states that it comes across as if the characters truly believe they are real, that their world is real. It honestly blew me away guys. You can check Brian's channel and video out from the links below, as I couldn't take credit for such a great find. Anyway guys, with that being said, that is my video on Felix Felicis liquid look. My question for you today is, Felix Felicis can give you the perfect day, but what would your perfect day be? Let me know in the comment section below. The best comment gets pinned to the top of the comment section. Thanks again for watching, have a great day and please, please, please be happy, you deserve it. Thank you so much for watching, I truly, truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever. So please, if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.